Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and today we are doing a tricky question, and it is trigonometric identities followed by trigonometric equations, which are, in my opinion, the most popular and most frequently occurring Edexcel exam question. They absolutely love questions like this, so it's a fantastic one to make sure you're fully prepared for. Okay, so the first thing is we are trying to prove an identity, which is very different to solving the equation. Uh, so what we need to do is just write out the left-hand side or the right-hand side. In this case, I'm going to go with the left-hand side because there's just it's just more substantial. Um, and then we need to convert it and rewrite it into the same as the right-hand side. We're not adding or subtracting things from one side of the um, the, the identity. That That's not what we're doing. We are just picking one and we're just trying to recreate the other. So with that being said... Um, 2 cot uh, 2x is the same as um, 2 over uh, tan 2x because cot is the reciprocal of tan. Okay, now the next thing we could do is we could write out an expression for uh, tan 2x in terms of just tan x using our double angle formula. So the double angle formula for tan 2x is 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan squared x. Okay, so that's not too pleasant. We've got a fraction in a fraction, fraction in a fraction, which we don't like. Uh, but let's just think about it. This can multiply up to the top because we are dividing 2 by this fraction. So it's the same as flipping the fraction over and multiplying. So this would multiply by the 2. So that'll give me two lots of 1 minus tan squared x. And that's all over uh, 2 uh, tan x. And that's plus tan x as well. Okay, so I can see an easy cancellation there. 2 is a factor of the top and it is a factor of the bottom. So that can cancel. And now what we need to do is we need to create a uh, single fraction. Uh, so what I'll need to do is I'll need to multiply uh, this tan x here um, top and bottom by tan x in order to force a denominator which is equivalent to the denominator here. So what have I got? Well when I add these numerators together I'm going to get 1 minus tan squared plus tan squared so that's just 1 and on the bottom I'm just going to get tan x uh, and as we know uh, tan x, the reciprocal of tan x is cot x, so therefore we could say that the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side, and we've we've done that that proof, lovely. Okay, so next part we need to solve this equation uh, for x in between minus pi and pi, so we need to make sure we're in radian mode uh, in order to do this, um, and you can see here that this is just three times. Um, well, there's, there's a difference of uh, a factor of 3 there. Um, so if I multiply this identity by 3, then it tells me the left-hand side of this equation should be equivalent to uh, 3 cot. So I'm going to write 3 cot x is equal to uh, cos x squared x minus 2. Now, you can't really solve a uh, a trig equation uh, if you have different trig functions in it. So we're going to need to um, swap one of them out. Uh, so there is a relationship between cos x squared and cot squared, which obviously I know. <laughs> but if not, you could always just derive it yourself by writing out sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Now because I want a cos x squared, I could divide 1 by sine squared uh, to get my cos x squared. And I just have to do that for every uh, term. So that gives me 1, and that gives me cot squared, and that gives me cosec squared. So I can just replace this cosec squared over here with a 1 plus cot squared x. Perfect, and that's minus 2. Right, now let's bring all of the terms to one side, because it's much easier to solve like that. Uh, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. That is a quadratic and we need to solve that via our calculator because it doesn't factorize, I don't think. No, it doesn't. 
Okay, so I'm going to go to polynomial degree 2, and I'm going to type in 1 for the squared term, minus 3 uh, for that term, and then minus 1 for the constant term. Okay, great. So I can write that cot x is equal to 3 plus root 13 over 2. And then, of course, the other one will be 3 minus root 13 over 2. Um, and we um, we don't need to worry, like we do for cos and sine, um, whether or not these values are in the range of uh, cot x, because cot x can take all real values, uh, just so, so just like tan can. Um, okay, so next we can say that tan x is the reciprocal of cot x, so we can flip it over like this. Uh, because that's going to be helpful so that we can actually do, um, we can find x using uh, tan to the minus 1 on our calculator, because there's no cot to the minus 1. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go into, um, I'm checking if I'm in radian mode, which I am. I do tan to the minus 1 of 2 over 3 plus um, root 13. Now, that gives me my first value, so that I can write here x is equal to 0 0.29, three decimal places, so 4. Now, I solve all my trig equations in the same way. Some people use cast diagrams, some people you know, do different things, but this is how I do it every time. So, the one thing I do remember is that sine, the second um, uh, solution for sine, is pi minus the first solution. For cos, it is 2 pi minus the first solution. And for tan, it is pi plus the first solution. Okay, so I just find my second solution, which in this case, I add on pi. Um, I know this isn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it's just the way that I do it every time because it works for all three functions and I love doing it. And there we go, I've got my two kind of principal um, solutions now, and those two solutions I can move 2 pi by subtracting, or I can go 2 pi by adding. And I can just keep doing that over and over and over to get more and more solutions. So now I look at the range, and I say, well, I'm in between minus pi and pi. So if I add pi to either of those two, uh, sorry, if I add 2 pi to either of those two, that's going to go way off. That's never going to work. But if I subtract 2 pi to this one, then that one will work, and that will still be in the range. So I could just subtract 2 pi, and that gives me this. Okay, so this one is no good, uh, but the ones that are good are this one, that's in the range, and this one. Okay, so I find the first one from my calculator, the second from the formula, and then I add or subtract 2 pi um, however many times that I need to. Okay, good. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to find the solution for this other equation as well. So I'm going to go to uh, tan to the minus 1, uh, 2 over uh, 3 minus uh, root 13. Um, and that is, okay, so that's a negative value, so that's minus 1.27, um, <laughs> okay, so once again, I'm just going to do the same method, I'm not going to overthink it, I'm just going to add on uh, pi, that's going to give me my second value uh, for tan, uh, so that gives me this, um, like that and now I need to think about which ones how can I get more values that are in the range well um, this value here um, is uh, out of the range uh, sorry it's in the range <laughs> sorry <laughs> in fact they're both good aren't they they're both good they're both in the range and if I were to add or subtract 2 pi to either of them then it's going to push them both out of the range. So these are just the ones which we're going to use. Okay, I don't know why I'm writing them out again, but it looks like I am. And that is good. All right, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you tomorrow for the next one. Bye for now.